So I've got to be honest about Black Panther 2. It's kind of... Yo, what's good to board you the views and I just got out of the theatre watching Black Panther 2. And the film pretty much centres on the leaders of Wakanda trying to protect their nation after the events of T'Challa's death. I was wondering what the plans were for this movie. I didn't see any of the trailers. How would this film work without the main character of Chadwick Boseman? And to my surprise, Black Panther 2 actually is a pretty entertaining flick. Siri in the first film was more like the comedic relief type of character, always cracking the jokes and one-liners. But this film, they make her the main character and she's more serious and really more on edge. Of course, feeling like she failed to Charlie because she couldn't find a cure for his illness. That first 10 minutes of the movie, my gosh, it was, it was pretty emotional. Well acted, well performed and well directed. I think it was the best 10 minutes of any MCU film in phase four so far. I like how we got to see more of the side characters, particularly that of Mebaku, played by Winston Duke, and T'Challa's mom. They get more screen time and development as well. And of course, the film has a lot of gorgeous shots and really cool soundtrack. I found the whole villain storyline and the underwater people to be probably the most underwhelming part of the film. I do like the idea of there being a whole nother civilization that's sort of linked and connected with Wakanda, but the way it was written, it felt a little confusing at times. I feel like I need to rewatch this film to appreciate the underwater people and their whole subplot. I was honestly just really here for the heroes, the main characters, particularly that of Siri. So that's my spoiler free review go ahead and watch the movie right now I recommend it but let's talk about spoilers right here I will admit I did love the moment where Siri goes to the astral plane after she creates this new Black Panther serum to give her the new Black Panther powers and she expects to see T'Challa or her mom or her father but to my surprise the person she sees in that astral plane is actually Michael B. Jordan's character Killmonger. Big surprise and we sort of dive deep into Siri's sort of dark side. I mean not only did she lose her father and her brother but also her mother. She also had a bit of a character moment with that new girl she sort of rescued her and then she just drowned and pretty sad, pretty sad emotional death. Siri is at her most lowest point. She just doesn't care anymore. And I love the whole fight sequence between her and the final villain dude. It was kind of brutal for a Marvel film and how she just wanted to kill him. And even though she had the power to, she just, she just looked at a reflection of herself. I'm not going to lie. I kind of dozed off during the flashback scenes of the villain's past so I don't really understand the dude's motives and all that. It wasn't because the film was boring or anything like that, I just had a lack of sleep and I just wasn't really focused watching the film so maybe that's why I found all the underwater scenes with the villain and his creature people to be kind of underwhelming because I just didn't understand any of it mate to be honest with you. This film honestly overall is a bit of a mixed bag. On one hand I really love all the scenes with Siri and all the Wakanda people, every time we're with those characters, I'm all in, I'm, I'm really loving everything with it. But then when we're with the underwater people and the scenes with Everett Ross and his ex-wife, it just sort of loses me a little bit and I'm just sort of, I'm sort of zoning out in those scenes with those characters. But overall, I think it's probably the best MCU since probably Spider-Man No Way Home in terms of just story and characters. I felt like Doctor Strange 2 and For Love and Thunder were a bit on the mess side, a bit too clunky and too exposition-y, but this film flowed well even though there was some moments that left me a bit confused. But maybe a second rewatch may help my understanding of Black Panther 2. Ryan Coogler and the team did a fantastic job trying to make this film flow as best as they could despite their unfortunate circumstances. So props to them. I'll give this film a 7.5 out of 10 and I think I'm going to give it a B-. minus. It wasn't the worst MCU film but it wasn't the best. It is what it is. Tell me in the comments down below what you guys thought of this film if you saw it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What is your favourite MCU movie? Tell me. Like for more movie reviews but thank you for watching. Boy the Review signing out.